Look around YouTube and you'll find hundreds and hundreds of videos comparing the Pixel 4 to lots of other phones. This is not one of those videos. I assume you're watching this video because you might be thinking about getting the Pixel 4, so you want to know what's good about it and what's not so great about it. If you've got those questions, don't worry, I got you. This is what this video is all about. Let's do this. Break it down now, phone, gadget, apps, it's the techie, techie guy. And welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name's Leron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadget, apps, tips and tricks on how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So before we dive into this video, I want to be clear. This phone has been my only phone. I haven't just simply done this review based on an afternoon walking around the city with a device, for example. Now, whilst our experiences with phones are going to be different, this is a real usage case situation so that you get an understanding of how powerful the phone is and where its shortcomings are. Let's jump into this. Let's talk about the phone itself. As you can see, I'm very happy to wave it around. It just feels nice and solid, doesn't feel slippery. I do love the fact that I've got this panda white and the fact it doesn't actually leave too many fingerprints on the back. So from that point of view, superb. Um, I also like the fact that the volume button is nice and responsive and those rocker buttons really work well. And the fact that the power button is a different color. That's really kind of adds to the nice design. Of course, I'm gonna slap a nice case onto this so that I do get the protection. All right, let's put it up. So, um, would it handle the workload? Absolutely. I kept on switching between gaming mode and emails and social media and YouTube, back to work, back to gaming, no problem at all. It's able to handle all those memory intensive applications, those processing intensive applications with no issue, no stutter, no lag, uh, just really no complaints there at all. The call quality for those of us who still make phone calls is brilliant. And the speakers which are actually um, mounted here at the bottom actually bring you something really superb sound. Even blasting this up to full volume and playing games on it really can hear there's no distortion, just a good quality audio. Now I would normally say I plug my headphones in and listen to the audio, but this one does not have a headphone jack. That one hurt Google, that one hurt, I'm not gonna lie. If you do have a USB Type-C headphones, you can simply plug those into the Pixel 4 and get that music pumped into your ears, or you can of course connect a Bluetooth headphones to this. Still bitter about the lack of a headphone jack. Now when it comes to battery life, things get weird. Well, weird or inconsistent, I should say. Some days I will get eight hours of on-screen time and some days I would only get five hours. Some days I would get a full 17 hours on a single charge and some days only 11 or 12 hours on a single charge. Now I have everything enabled such as ambient EQ and smooth display. Will it last a full day? Absolutely. But do you start to panic towards the end of the day? Yeah, you kind of do because you just never know. I will say it does have fast charging, be it wired or wireless. So you do get to top up your battery really quickly. But again, it just that inconsistency just makes me a bit worried. Okay, can we talk about this 90 hertz display for a second? So the Pixel 4 does have a 90 hertz display, high refresh rate, which means things are feel nice and smooth as you're navigating around the phone. It will switch between 60 hertz and 90 hertz depending on what you're doing. So if you're watching a YouTube clip at 720p, 60 hertz is perfectly fine. But if you're playing a VR game or something like that, it will upscale it to 90 hertz. When the screen display drops below 75%, it has been noted that it automatically switches back to 60 hertz. Google is said to be releasing some software fix for that, so stay tuned for when that happens, then just update it. But if you do want to keep your Pixel 4 at 90 hertz, all you're going to do is go down into your developer's options and then find the 90 hertz always on and then simply toggle that switch. Uh, hat tip over to Marquez for pointing that out. Now, I've been using the Pixel 3a as my main phone before I swapped over to the Pixel 4. And one of the really cool features that I always enjoyed is the always on display. At a glance, you can look at your phone and you can kind of see what notifications you've got, what's going on on your phone. And that was really an awesome feature, which has been brought over to the Pixel 4. However, with the Pixel 4, because of its amazing face unlock feature and how quick it is, you tend to unlock your phone a lot. Even when you just want to glance at your always on display screen, just by doing that action, it essentially unlocks the phone. So often I would catch myself looking for the time or what's the weather 
and just if I look at the phone a little bit too heads on, immediately the screen would then unlock. Now speaking of biometrics, ugh, the one thing I really miss from the Pixel 3a is the fingerprint scanner. I don't know why this isn't in the Pixel 4. Now I miss it for two reasons. The first, it was just how quick and simple it was to unlock your phone with your finger. But the second reason is the fact that you could do pull down notifications. You can grab your phone, swipe down, and then you'll be able to read your notifications. There is no way to do that on the Pixel 4 besides unlocking the phone and then physically swiping down. This was such an awesome and convenient feature. I really do miss that. Now, speaking of using your hands, the Pixel 4 does have something called motions. Essentially, it's a sensor that's built into the forehead of the device itself, creating a little bubble around the unit so that when you approach the device, it already can start taking actions. Now, motions have got a couple of options that's built in, like swipe your hands and it will go to the next track, do it this way, we'll go to the previous track. You can silence your alarm, you can silence a phone call. And that is pretty much it. Now these also work only in very specific apps. If you've got a third party music player, for example, you can swipe all you want, nothing actually happens. But the good news is that the hardware is now baked into the Pixel 4, which means that as soon as software developers get in on this motion track, if they will, then we should be able to see a lot more usages for it. Think of it something like being able to browse a website and do this kind of motion and it will scroll down the page or back up the page, things of that nature. We've got the hardware, it's built in. Software developers, make it useful. Okay, let's talk about the big elephant in the room, which is the camera. Now, a camera experience on a phone is typically influenced a lot by your previous device. What features did you have, what you're used to, and what you're going to get in the new device. There are already hundreds and hundreds of videos comparing the Pixel 4a camera to everything else. So if you want to watch them, go ahead and do that. I'm not here to convince you one way or another, but I will tell you my personal experience using this camera. I digged it. I think it worked really, really well. The pics always came out nice and sharp. It was software was a pleasure to use. It's not complicated. I like the fact that in the camera, you simply swipe down anywhere on the screen and your settings are right there for you to change if you need them to. You can control the shadows and the highlights and everything all in one shot. Night sight is of course like a pleasure. That was the difference between a usable photo and a completely unusable photo. It just worked. Now a cool feature that I really appreciate is after you snap a photo on the preview that you can actually swipe up and it allows you to instantly share it with up to three social media platforms. So a nice little touch and really, really useful. Now when it comes to video, we can shoot at 1080p or at 4K, at 30 frames per second, 60 frames per second or auto. The video was always nice and stable. I mean that stabilization is just amazing. And the audio just nice and clear. Overall, a really, really great package. For the rest of us who just simply want to take a couple of video clips, upload them to Instagram, um, upload them to TikTok, things of that nature, uh, what else could you ask for? Now again, I just want to be clear before all those comments come flooding in, I am not trying to convince you that this is better than another phone. I'm merely explaining what this phone can do and is it good enough to use on a regular basis absolutely the best camera is the one that you have with you you're going to have an awesome camera experience if you just have the pixel 4. i'm going to have more tests that i'm going to be running on this so make sure you hit that subscribe button which is down here the head below check out some more of the videos i've done on the pixel 4 right here and if you like this video give it a thumbs up and i'll see you guys in those videos <laughs>